The final score, Wrexham 2, Scunthorpe United 0. And it was hard work, but I've got to be honest, I kind of thought it would be. Certainly Wrexham deserved a win. Two penalties from Paul Mullen making the difference. But Scunthorpe are a different beast from what they've been earlier this season, and frankly a different beast from what they were three weeks ago. And I feel that if we played them three weeks ago, we might well have enjoyed another comfortable win. We've already played them twice and beaten them 3-1 uh, already this season. And, well, the league away win was much more comfortable than that scoreline suggested. And the FA Trophy win, although they did go ahead, it was against a heavily rotated team and we were pretty comfortable winners. This was a bit different. They've got a new manager, Jimmy Dean. And in those three weeks since he was appointed, he's brought in 10 new players and they were always likely to be aside scrapping for their new boss or their new club and they showed that for an extended period in the first half which made this game quite edgy but ultimately Wrexham saw it through. So interesting changes in the Wrexham side Anthony Ford rotated out and Bryce Susanna getting a chance to start and come back from injury which sadly didn't end well. Um, on the left hand side that meant McAlinden started with Jacob Mendy on the bench tellingly as he was rested, because he's been playing probably a bit more than he'd have intended to after coming back from injury. And the big news on the starting eleven, at least, Rob Linton replacing Mark Howard in goal. Rather, I suspect not a rotation, but a chance for Linton to re-establish himself after injury. The other big news was on the bench, where Jordan Davis returned. Fabulous news for Wrexham. So, Wrexham started off well. Although in the opening stages, the only real chance they made was a long throw by Toza, which Tunnicliffe met about eight yards out, but couldn't keep on top of it, and it looped high onto the roof of the net. A couple of minutes later, Lainton immediately proved his worth with a crucial double save. It was a long diagonal by Scunthorpe over to Wrexham's left-hand side, badly misjudged in the air by McAlinden, who let it go behind him, and Wilson, who was lively in the first half, brought it down nicely, Hit a really vicious volley across Linton from about 15 yards on the right-hand side. <clears throat> Typical Linton save, the, the diving, agile parry to push the ball away. But couldn't push it away far enough and it looked like Danny Elliott would swoop to score. However, Toza did brilliantly to lunge in and tackle him as he went for the follow-through. He still managed to divert it towards goal, but with not much pace. And Lainton was able to recover, get down and make a double save uh, to stop it from crossing the line. And then Wrexham went back on top and were comfortably on top. I must say, I, I thought in this opening period, i no not saying that their manager wanted them to, but it felt a bit like they were parking the bus a little bit too much. And Wrexham were dominating possession. <clears throat> they were slightly disjointed, I thought, in a way in how they reacted when we had the ball in our half. So they were essentially, they were playing with the back four. The front four, if you will, striker and the three in the second line, would all come into Wrexham territory but wouldn't actually press the ball. But they weren't really blocking the passing channels either. Certainly not for players like Toza, who were able to pass the ball out well from the back. And so Wrexham had quite a bit of joy just knocking it around at the back, drawing these four players into this, for me, no-man land position where they, they aren't really applying pressure or blocking anything off. They're almost taking themselves out of the game. And Wrexham were able to ping balls over the top of them. Toza hitting those diagonals, particularly to Bryce Susanna on the right, who was very influential early on because he'd be dropped in. And behind that, fr that fo front four would be the two central midfielders with loads of space either side of them. So Toes would drop Hosanna in, and Hosanna immediately would make an overload driving forwards. James Jones would come and join him, or he'd link up with the strikers, and Scunthorpe were getting stretched. But when they were able to recover, if the early ball didn't come in, they were then defending their penalty area quite deeply, and I thought asking for, for trouble, if I'm honest. Although the, the first real bit of trouble they got into was of their own making. Both centre-backs managed to find themselves on the right-hand side, about 30 yards out. Boyce tried to drill the ball clear, hit Richard Everton, and the ball rebounded to Palmer, who, again, didn't quite have the happiest of times in the penalty area. Not much fell his way, but I tell you what, just like against Woking, put in a hell of a shift and really forced errors from defenders. Well, he was one here, 
He picked up on the ricochet, drove forwards, a two-on-one break. Palmer, with a clear run at goal, albeit down the left channel, so not the best angle, decided to square it and Leek was able to come across the left back and intercept before Mullen could get to it. Frustrating that for Palmer and Mullen. Um, unselfish of Palmer, I think he should have had a goal, if I'm honest. He had enough of the sight of the goal to work the goalkeeper. <clears throat> Wrexham soon afterwards went close when again Hosanna at the centre of things drove forwards into space this time Cluith went on the overlap Hosanna fed him a slightly under hit pass for my money which Hosanna was uh, Cluith basically just about got to on time and because it was under hit he had to act immediately rather than take a touch and so he brilliantly nutmegged the defender who'd been drawn in by the slightly under hit nature of the pass and then calmly pulled it back to tee Hosanna up about 15 yards out. He struck his shot well enough, but it was well blocked. In the 17th minute, it was actually, I think on with hindsight, the highlight of the match. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I haven't seen any explanation yet, Aaron Chapman, who's Crawley's uh, Crawley, who's Scunthorpe's new keeper signed from Crawley, and made his debut in their win last Saturday, wasn't playing or on the bench and so young teenage keeper Owen Foster who had a bad time at the race course in the FA Trophy in December you might recall but actually has had a little run since then and has done well was back in goal but he had a, a horrible moment coming out of the box to deal with a, a ball over the top no pressure on him but he mishit it badly and pulled a flat clearance to Young in the centre circle in the Wrexham half his first touch teed himself up and then from the halfway line Young hit <laughs> amidst the cacophony of screams to shoot from the Wrexham fans a glorious long range towards the open goal it dropped and landed agonisingly square on top of the, of the bar and bounced behind brilliant effort from Young it really really was he deserved the goal there was some bad news four minutes later for Wrexham though when Bryce Susanna off the ball just broke down and not for the first time, sadly, it was really looking very emotional as he had to make way. What a shame. He only lasted 21 minutes. And so Jacob Mendy, who Wrexham probably wanted to rest, had to come on early. He went on to the left. McAlinda went on to the right. There was just enough time for me to make a little speech about how this will disorientate Wrexham because McAlinda is better on the left-hand side before McAlinden played a glorious pass that led to the opening goal. McAlinden getting it 25 yards out and playing that sort of perfect 50-50 into the box. The defender's got to go for it, but Richard Everton is a solid centre-back, but he's nowhere near as quick as Mullen, who nipped in, just got that first touch, and Richard Everton committed to trying to play the ball, took Mullen out. Cast iron penalty, Mullen stepped up, drilled it in, Wrexham were ahead. The game changed massively at that point. Scunthorpe seemed to get their pressing game right and did pen Wrexham in and it was an uncomfortable final 20 minutes of the first half you wondered if the first goal might open the floodgates instead the first goal led to Scunthorpe coming out to play they moved the ball around quite well didn't create many chances although Wilson had a good 25 yard drive which Lington parried his one slightly uncomfortable moment back in the goal mouth and Wrexham were penned into the area for a good 30 seconds as Scunthorpe tried to find a way through, but Wrexham kept their shape well and the danger passed. But although that was the only real dangerous moment, Wrexham just couldn't keep the ball. The Scunthorpe were camped in Wrexham's half and had good shape once they'd committed those extra players forwards, and it was genuinely different, difficult for Wrexham at the back to pass their way through. I think there was a a, a slightly disconcerted sense about Wrexham's play as well, the fact that Scunthorpe had suddenly started to click and make it difficult to pass through and around them and we resorted too much to just knocking the ball clear rather than trying to get the ball down and and stay calm and Palmer and Mullin really didn't have much to work with in all honesty so it was a messy end to the half the sort of thing you have when a side that's eager to improve plays against a side who are playing constantly two games a week I think to be honest with you so Wrexham were probably pretty happy to get to the half-time whistle. They needed words from Phil Parkinson, and no doubt they got them. And Wrexham started the second half much better. In fact, the second half was much better in general. <clears throat> I thought it was indicative of the person he is and the player he is that Luke Young 
as Wrexham came out with renewed energy and determined to get on the front foot, was driving everything forward. He was getting high up the pitch. He was making challenges. He was playing crisp early passes, making himself available, keeping the ball rotating. And he was so prominent, you know, clearly taking on the, ref the manager's advice and really looking to put it into action. It was really good proactive stuff from Young. And he teed up the first chance of the second half. <clears throat> first, the start of it was bizarre, though. Wrexham were using quite often that far post corner that we work where we crowd the six yard box and then the player will peel off beyond the far post and there's nobody picking them up. Young delivers, Mullum was the player coming back. He had a free volley from about eight yards out from a tightish angle and mishit it so badly that it sliced off the outside of his right foot and Young had to go back 25 yards to retrieve it. But having picked up Mullen's clearance, he then whipped in a glorious cross. Tozer at the near post about eight yards out was unmarked. Difficult header though because his body shape wasn't right because he was coming out after Mullen's mishit to avoid being offside. But he did well to get up, twist his body and get a touch onto it. Unfortunately for Tozer, it wasn't enough to, not, to glance it inside the far post and it was a bit too much to flick it on to the players attacking uh, the far post as well. So the opportunity went. And the next chance of the half, despite Wrexham's positivity, was very nearly an equaliser. Pew out of the blue, poetry, drilled a terrific 25-yarder, which hit the inside of the right post and flew across the face of goal. Wrexham clinging on to survive with that one. But then it was back to normal service being resumed. <clears throat> Wrexham had a couple of good chances around the hour mark. I've got to be honest, the first one I didn't think that much of at the time. And wasn't going to mention it. And wasn't going to put it in the highlights either. But as I was editing the highlights, I was looking through and, and sort of accidentally happened on a replay of it and realised that what looked fairly innocuous was very nearly a goal. Again, it was a young set piece. Corner swept in. Mullen, beyond the far post, managed to get to it. But his back was to goal. The ball obviously coming over his shoulder. Very difficult to do anything with it. So he, he made a... Nice little opportunistic flick back over his shoulder. I don't think he was necessarily intended to score as much as just keep things alive and drop the ball back in the goal mouth. He got a tiny bit too much on it. But like I said, when I looked at the replays, I realised how close he came to scoring. It was only about a foot wide of the far post as it, as it dropped tantalisingly down. So, yeah, he was genuinely unlucky there. And then a minute later, again, Wrexham... Uh, creating an opportunity and this was maybe the most incisive play that Wrexham managed and a lovely move down the left hand side Elliot Lee driving the ball forwards hitting Palmer who made a beautiful first time little flick around the corner to put Mendy clear on goal from from the wing he cut in really well to improve his angle and then drilled a powerful shot across the keeper which just went wide of the far post James Jones was livid though because he was making a good run in support and if Mendy had pulled it back he would have had a simple finish. Wrexham <clears throat> continuing to push on. Young driving the ball to the edge of the area to the feet of Palmer who pinned his man and then span him brilliantly and hit a powerful shot from just inside the box. Excellent save from Young Foster jumping to his left and getting strong hands to it to push it away. But it dropped on the edge of the area to Matt Linden who called Tunnicliffe off but then with a good amount of the, the goal available to him put it just wide of the right post. Wrexham made a change of 16 minutes left. Palmer coming off, Dolby coming on. I think, to be fair to Palmer, he put in a good shift. But, hell's bells, hasn't Dolby earned a chance to get a 15-minute run at the end? Plus, of course, Palmer is not fully fit, I don't think. And giving him a little bit more rest isn't a bad idea. <coughs> but, again, Scunthorpe came forwards. And although he didn't put much pressure on Wrexham in the second half, did carve out this second opportunity, Ogle. Whipping a good cross into the box. Beeston diving header about 10 yards out. Really made good contact with it. Excellent save from Lainton to drop down to his right and push it away to safety. With 10 minutes left, a moment we were waiting for, Jordan Davis came on to replace McAlinden, who, it must be as the game went on, started to be a little less effective with his use of the ball. Davis came on and there was an interesting rejig. It led to quite a major redraft of the team's personnel and it really worked it was quite an interesting thing to see Davis went to left midfield in the midfield three Lee who had not been at his most busy moved across to the right 
and James Jones dropped back to be a right wing back for the first time for Wrexham. And the result was a really good conclusion. The last 10 minutes plus the six minutes out of time, Wrexham played well. And it, it looked quite balanced, even though there were players in unfamiliar positions. Jones did a really good shift down the right. Lee was brought back to life a little bit after quite a quiet game. And Davis did well. In fact, within a minute of coming on, he was instrumental in Wrexham getting the second clinching goal. He picked it up on the edge of the area. The fans told him to shoot. He wasn't going to think about it twice. He drilled a powerful shot. In all honesty, Foster should have done better. It was straight at him, hit with power, but he spilled it, dropped in front of him. Mullen again was really alert, got to it first. The keeper was committed and took Mullen's legs from under him. A second cast iron penalty. Mullen drilled it with power. The keeper went the right way, but the power was too much. He couldn't get to it. And Wrexham had breathing space. And it was Wrexham pushing on, looking for more as well. With two minutes left, Luke Young with a fabulous strike from 25 yards, a typical Luke Young effort, which wobbled in the air and in the end just scraped the left post as it went wide. And in the last minute of added time, a bizarre incident, in all honesty. James Jones getting it on the right, driving in across. Substitute Butterfield handled it, no doubt about that. His arm was up. The referee gave handball. The linesman was right next to it. But it was in the box. It, it was comfortably in the box. And they gave a free kick outside the box. James Jones, once again, was furious. And quite rightly. It, it, but it wasn't, he wasn't like marginal. When you look at the replays on our highlights, he's a good stride inside the area. It's really odd that the officials missed it. I, I've got to say, there were some strange decisions by the linesman sometimes. And the referee, I thought, was all right. So I think maybe the linesman needed to help him out a bit there. But it was definitely a penalty, no question. Paul Mullen could have had a chance to score a hat-trick of penalties. That would be a thing. But he didn't get that chance. But it, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't matter. Because Wrexham, again, win at home. Looking at the performances, well, great stuff from Lainton. Returning to the team, looking really sound and secure. Making those two excellent saves as well. That's uh, really pleasing to see. The back three all played well. I thought I thought Toza in particular really made a lot of good interceptions when Wrexham were under pressure, including uh, some really cool ones where not only did he get there first, but he calmly first time laid the ball off to a player in a good position who could start an attack. Uh, to his left, Tony Cliff first start since the Sheffield United first match. I thought it was excellent. Is it a coincidence he comes back in and we keep a clean sheet after seven games when we haven't? Maybe not, but certainly he was excellent defensively. And Clewis did very well too. He was tested at times. Um, there were times when the crowd seemed a bit impatient when he brought the ball forwards. I don't know if it was directed to him or the lack of movement for him. I would certainly say, this happened mostly during Stuntov's good spell, I'd certainly say that the problem lay with a lack of options and movement rather than Clewis, who defensively did well and came forwards effectively too. The wing-backs, oh, poor Hosanna. You know, he was so prominent. He looked so dangerous. He was ripping down the right, and then he pulls up again. Oh, I just hope he can get over this and get a decent run of games because he's a proper prospect. It's really cruel, that. But he, he was a constant threat when he was on with his pace. On the left-hand side, Macklin had a strange sort of game. So at Aldershot, I think that was the best I've seen him play at wing-back. He really did well. In this match, there were elements of that. He did some very good things going forwards and didn't really have too many problems defensively, in all honesty. Um, as the game went on, he started to get, I don't know, less secure in his passing. He gave the ball away quite unnecessarily on a few occasions. It was it was quite strange. I don't know what the explanation was. And I think that was, I assume that was as much the reason why he was taken off as the fact that we'll probably need him at wing back again on Saturday. But he did do some very good things too. He put some good crosses in. Lovely ball in for Mullen to win the first penalty. And he went close to that shot from the edge of the area. So, yeah, OK. Again, uh, did all right, I thought, at wing back. In the centre of midfield, Luke Young was our man of the match. Oh, it's brilliant. It was really, he was everywhere. He had a crazy long-range shot in the first half. He had a brilliant 25-yarder in the second. He's putting some good set pieces in that we're winning as well. Pinged that good ball to Palmer when he turned his man. I produce, and like I said, I think one of the things that struck me the most, just his leadership at the start of the second half, that the game turned around because whatever Parkinson's had at halftime was carried out well by the team and Young was absolutely in the forefront of that. Either side of him, 
Jones again had a good game, got into some good positions. Uh, maybe it would be frustrated he wasn't found in some of them. And then as a wing back, that was only ten minutes, but he looked pretty good. You know, he's got the attributes for a wing back, and he's quick. He'll work hard up and down all day. He can use the ball, and he's strong. And um, he didn't have that much sort of direct defending to do, but he certainly showed that there's another option if we have problems at wing back. He, he did a, a good shift in there. And Elliot Lee, now he also had a strange sort of game. I mean, firstly, you're certainly not going to doubt his desire and enthusiasm. And he was very busy, if you will. He didn't have that many of those creative moments that we get used to with him. Um, until, with 10 minutes left as part of that reshuffle, he ended up on the right side of the midfield three. When he seemed to just suddenly come to life. I don't know why. Whether it was Jones constantly bombing up and down outside him, giving him something to work with, I don't know. But in the last 10 minutes, Lee was great. There was one lovely little moment, which... It's just a little moment, but it was so delightfully Elliot Lee. He got the ball, immediately two school hall players were on him, and they forced him to the side of the pitch. So he's got his back to the pitch, standing on the line, with the ball about to cross. He stops it, puts his foot on it, waits until the Zeus Gunthorpe players are really tight, brilliant awareness, and then just, I'm not, it wasn't a back heel, he just rolled his studs over the ball and rolled it backwards between the two of them perfectly to a teammate who could then bring it forwards in space. It was just, it was lovely, it was just so cheeky, it was so simple, but it was so, so uh, fun. <laughs> it was wonderful. Um, so, good stuff that was. And then up front, well, Palmer, as I said before, really deserves a lot of credit for the work rate he puts in. Things aren't dropping from much in the box, although he was very unlucky not to score when Foster made that good save after he turned his man. But fair play to him if he's battling well in the air still. His pressing of defenders, or just his willingness, maybe pressing's the wrong word, his willingness to chase. He is good at putting defenders under by the corner flags. He won the ball back a couple of times, and he also forced a lot of hurried clearances because he will chase the balls that he can't get to. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. And speaking of people who will chase anything, well, Paul Mullen got two penalties by doing exactly that. And he, again, Mullen was was everywhere, lively, effervescent up front, popping up in dangerous places. But those two penalties, especially the second one, just that striker's instinct of if the ball's in the box, I'm alert to it, I'm going to attack it, I'm going to see what happens. Well, that, that won us the game, you know, honestly. As for the subs, Dolby did pretty well in the air again. Didn't have quite the impact he has on some occasions, but he certainly looked good. And I'm still delighted with the progress he's made. It's a real treat to see. Uh, Mendy came on. Wasn't quite as secure, but like McAlinden, lost the ball a few times and maybe he shouldn't have done. But all in all, yeah, he's a great player. He was driving forwards effectively, didn't have any issues defensively. And the third substitute was Jordan Davis. It was brilliant to see him back, and it was a nice little cameo at the end of the game. He used the ball well. He had a couple of shots, one of which led to the penalty, and it was great to see him back and, and looking himself. It's a fantastic stuff. <clears throat> was it massively fluent? No. Does it matter? No. Three points are what matters. Um, is there any argument to say we didn't deserve three points? No. It wasn't as pretty as usual, but you know we were on top for most of the game and when we were under pressure we only allowed one dangerous moment which was a shot from 25 yards so that's not a problem a chance being created so yeah good stuff and then we move on Dorking again next Saturday and same again please with the final score of Wrexham 2 Scunthorpe United nil. I'm Mark Griffiths from Wrexham AFC